Okay, in this video we're going to cover a Poisson regression exercise. Um, the scenario is uh, you collect data from 54 ninth grade students on their perceived level of academic self-efficacy and sex, coded 0 for male, 1 for female. Later you collect data on the number of advanced placement courses the students had taken by the time they graduated high school. So you decide to test a hypothesized model where student sex and ninth grade academic self-efficacy are included as predictors of the number of advanced placement courses students would take in high school. So we're going to run a Poisson regression analysis using SPSS. Uh, this is the data set right here. So as I said before, there are 54 cases. And uh, the number of advanced placement courses uh, is this variable right here. Uh, academic self-efficacy in ninth grade. And then we have students' uh, sex, uh, which is coded 0 for male, 1 for female. So to carry out the analysis, we just go to Analyze, Generalized Linear Models, uh, right here. Uh, we will now select uh, Poisson Log Linear. And under Response, we'll select uh, Number of Advanced Placement Course Variable, right here. Under Predictors, we'll select uh, Academic Self-Efficacy and Sex as covariates. Model will include both of these uh, as predictors. And uh, under um, statistics, we'll also ask for uh, include exponential parameter estimates. So then we'll click on OK. And you can see that we get our basic uh, Poisson model right here. And uh, as we scroll down, you'll see that we get uh, the omnibus test. This is a likelihood ratio chi-squared test. If this is uh, indicating statistical significance, then we would infer that uh, the model containing our predictors is, uh, represents a significant improvement in fit over a null model with no predictors. So this is our p-value that we have right here. Uh, if we use conventional alpha at 0 0.05, we can see our p-value, uh, which we would report in a research report, is less than 0 0.001. We can see that that's obviously less than our alpha. So we would infer that our model represents a significant improvement in fit over a null or intercept-only model. Then down here, we have our parameter estimates. Uh, and uh, these are the unstandardized uh, uh, regression coefficients. Uh, and these are basically the values for uh, academic self-efficacy and sex right here. These are basically the values uh, that you see right here reflecting the predicted change in the log count of, uh, of the number of uh, advanced placement courses taken. Uh, per unit increase on a predictor variable. So um, rather than kind of focusing on the log count, you can just pretty much assume that a positive value uh, for a coefficient would indicate that uh, increasing scores on a predictor are associated with an increasing count with respect to the number of advanced placement courses. A negative coefficient would indicate uh, de decreasing uh, uh, predictions of uh, decreased counts uh, for every one unit on the predictor. So um, at any rate, looking right here, you can see that uh, uh, academic self-efficacy was a significant positive predictor uh, of the count of, it, of the number of advanced uh, placement courses. Sex, uh, it was positive, which means that uh, given the coding, where you had zero for male, one for female, uh, that would indicate that females were predicted to have a higher number have taken a higher number of uh, academic placement courses than males, but that difference between males and females was not statistically significant. Uh, this column right here contains the incidence rate ratio, and uh, basically a value of one would indicate that there's no relationship between uh, the predictor uh, or independent variable and uh, the uh, the uh, count for uh, the number of advanced placement courses. A value of, uh, that's greater than one would indicate that with increasing uh, values on the, uh, the independent variable, there would be uh, increased uh, likelihood of uh, greater counts um, on the uh, dependent measure, whereas a value that's less than one, basically falling between zero and one, would reflect a decreasing likelihood of, um, uh, of um, higher counts. So, if we go and we kind of just look at a little bit of a write-up, this is what I've kind of put together, we can say the likelihood ratio chi-squared test indicates that the full model was a significant improvement over uh, in fit over a null, basically no predictor model. Uh, academic self-efficacy was a significant predictor of the number of advanced placement courses taken. So there's the regression coefficient, standard error, and p-value. So that's just uh, this, this, and uh, this right here. And we can say 
uh, kind of descriptively, uh, you know, for every one unit increase on self-efficacy, the predicted log count, of course, is taken uh, increased by uh, 0.139. Uh, the incidence rate ratio, which we see right here, this is um, the incidence rate ratio, um, and this is uh, the value right here, which, um, indicates that for every one unit increase on the predictor, the incidence rate for the number of courses increased by a factor of 1.149. Or if we wanted to talk about uh, uh, the um, uh, change in incidence rate in terms of uh, uh, percentage change, we can just basically take this number right here, subtract one from it, multiply by 100%, and we could say then that um, for every one unit increase on the predictor, the incidence rate uh, change or increase by a fact by 14.9%. Uh, um, in terms of uh, sex, we can see that sex was not a significant predictor of the number of advanced placement courses taken, so there's our regression coefficient, standard error, and the p-value. So that's this value, this value, and this value. The incidence rate ratio indicates that for females, the incidence rate for the number of courses was 1.184 times greater than that for males. Uh, in other words, the incidence rate for females, if we wanted to talk about percentage difference, um, is basically 18.4% uh, greater than that for males.